ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final series of Group A and the final set of matches for today's broadcast. And what a way to end this group. Wow, wow, wow. I cannot believe that we get to cast something of this caliber in the Red Trunks, playing Terran. To the southeast of Taldorim Alta, it is Marine King Prime versus his opponent in the Blue Trunks, playing Terran to the southwest, Slayer's Boxer. Yeah, and from what I've... I'm like looking at my notes at the same time. I'm like, yeah, all right. So what we've made now, and probably some people are doing exactly the same as me, is, you know, what is happening within the group. So, of course, Todd yep. is out, but it looks like Rhett is also out if, you know, things go from map score. Simply because yep. he's at 5-5 currently with 2-2 two, two games. So he's 1-2, he's lost 2, is at 5-5 five, five in maps. Puma has won two, lost two, but is 6-5 in maps. So that three-way tie we talked about is now only potentially a two-way tie. And very simply, for, for this last game here, Boxer has to win. No matter, because currently Boxer is 2-1 in games, of course, this is his last game, but is 4-4 yep. four, four in maps. If he was to lose 0-2, that's 4-6 which means, again, Puma, better score. If he was to lose 1-2, yep. again, 5-6. Again, an inferior map score to Puma. So, that basically means, if Marine King wins, he advances through his first with Puma. If Boxer is to win, both of these guys are through as 3-1, and Marine King Prime goes through due to map score as first. That will be our... Yeah, what a, what a weird, funky group that is. You know, who advances? Well, Boxer and Boxer. So yeah. we shall see if, of course, Boxer beats Boxer. Those mm -hmm. of you who don't know the backstory to this, it's really quite simple. In a very early GSL, Marine King Prime went by the name of Boxer. And he was known by the fans as Foxer, a.k.a. Fake mm -hmm. Boxer. And then he renamed to Marine King Prime. And that is why we are currently in this weird situation of fake boxer versus real boxer. And what we saw from real boxer over here was refinery first, double refinery into Reaper, which looks very much like what we saw against Puma going for this Reaper possibly speed build. Yeah, it looks like it. You know, one of Boxer's signature builds. And I can't remember who did it first. I, it, was, it was, of course, a Slayer's build. I think uh, Tejia may have displayed it in ESV. And Boxer then used it um, within the GSL, if I remember correctly. Not exactly sure on the final details, but it's definitely a Slayer's build. So once again, that is what we're going to be seeing here. And Marine King has gone for Command Center first, then with a double barracks follow-up. So this actually could be devastating for Marine King, who will only be relying on Marines alone against this. Yeah, against the Reaper Hellion build with speed, which is brutal in and of itself. But you've got two units that absolutely destroy Marines. And I like the fact that he's already going for that Marine. He knows that he needs to start knocking these Marines down. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to run. He ran right into that. And an interception occurs, but he gets away. He's out of there with that Reaper. All right, let's see what Box is going to do behind this. So he throws down a Starport and also throws down a, a Hellion. But he hasn't decided to upgrade... The Reaper research speed, for yeah. uh, Reaper Speed. So it looks mm. like it's just going to be without it this time around. It doesn't want to upgrade it and spend money on that, but wants to spend money in Medivacs instead, which is still fine. Hellion Medivac and a Reaper or two is going to be very good against Pure Marine. And, well, finally actually does decide to get the Nitro Packs. Yeah, it was a little bit like that. Admittedly, it's not a particularly slow piece of research. Right? It's really, really quick. So maybe he just thought, well, mm. you know what? I don't need it yet. I don't have the number of units to make it work yet. So perhaps he's actually practiced this timing. Who knows? So maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe it was deliberate. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But still, you know, the Marine Count's climbing pretty fast now, which is the scary yep. part. Double Engineering Bay as well. Marine King very comfortable of what potentially could come from this. And he's going to be able to research combat shields immediately as well. So the Nitro Pax is halfway complete now. We should be seeing combat shields initially because you don't want to be taking a gamble with Stim first. You kind of want to be on the defensive side because you're the one that's yep. got the command center. So I'd expect uh -huh. to see uh, that upgrade first or straight after. Or actually decides to go you went into 1-1. One -one. Yeah. So I guess it can be with the next um, with the next 100 gas. Otherwise, it wouldn't make too much sense. But here Boxer comes and he's going right to the main base where there's nothing, no detection or anything. Yep, four Reapers, four Hellions, and a Medivac. 
Only three of them will come in. What is that? Is that... Is that Banshee Cloak coming in as well from Boxer? Just to, It is. It's Banshee Cloak to follow this up. And an expansion. This build is bizarre. I I certainly haven't seen it before. Maybe you have. But more to the point, this engagement coming in right here. It comes down to the control of both. Whose is best? I guess we're about to find out. The Reaper Speed is done. The Hellions are there as well. And Boxer microing his heart out at the moment. Evacuates all of the Reapers and one of the Hellions as well. And now is going to go straight for the natural where the Marines are just dashing to intercept this particular particular attack. Once again, in comes the harassment. He's got to watch out once again not to take too much damage here. The Reapers are just smashing their way through. A quick evacuation at the bunker. Very quick thinking there by Marine King Prime. And Boxer's attack has, for the moment, ended. And losses-wise, he's killed 13 workers. Yeah, that's a lot of workers killed here, and it puts him at the SCV lead. But here comes the really difficult part with this build is the follow-up of Cloak Banshee. So he's going to continue to harass with Cloak Banshees coming in. This is getting really difficult from Ranking Prime now. Yeah, it really is. That supply deep could actually go down as well. That's really, really fast stuff. Uh, and, oh, he takes it. There you go. He at least gets something out of that and can evacuate once again using the medevacs, of course, using the cliff faces. And Marine King is suddenly on the receiving end of something very unpleasant. And as you said, Cloaked Banshee could really cause a lot of problems here, especially if Marine King decides to dump down a lot of mules to try and play catch up. Yeah, and he definitely will be. I mean, he's got a couple of scans available now, and he doesn't know if this Banshee is Cloak or not. He's seen the build before, so he knows, but the Reaper's at the front now, gonna have to deal with a counterattack being launched by Marine King, but he cloaks in the main base at the same time here. Oh my god, I can't believe how much damage Boxer, Slayer's Boxer, is actually throwing across. This build is nuts. It really, really is. I like the fact that Marine King is actually repairing those SCVs, which means the damage is actually minimized. This attack is coming in, but there's already a bunker and Reapers and a Banshee there. She's not going to do a damn thing. The scan comes in, and Boxer actually needs to get out of there, but I think he's too focused on the attack on his natural, so he ends up losing the Banshee unnecessarily, but he has done the damage. 20 SCVs is all that remains here for Marine King Prime. Yeah, what a beautiful game so far by the Emperor as he goes in with a single Reaper once again, trying to get behind the natural mineral line, and he's going to succeed here once again. Oh, fun times right now. He can just pick off as many SCVs as he wants, but he actually gets trapped there. Nice move there by Marine King Prime. It's kind of unnecessary, really, to engage in the mineral line just like that. But once again, damage has been done. And the last thing Slayer's Boxer wants to do here is throw this away by making slip-ups. And I hope that his next attack is precise. But he takes map control here, takes the Zelnaga Tower, has a very firm economic lead, and has tech. I mean, he's got so much tech. He's got yeah. loads of different things. The only thing is fallen behind on is of course straight up upgrades and here the cloak banshee goes in once again and like you said these marines do have one one but it doesn't matter if there's no cloak and he's going to be dropping reapers onto the natural oh, no boxer shut down marine king prime shuts that down completely a big mistake there by boxer that's the kind of thing i was talking about that's what he can't afford to do the banshee shot down as well oh no that was that, that could not have gone any worse yeah, that was really shut down, and the 1-1 one, one upgrades not only affecting Marines, but also affecting SUVs, making it three shots as a Banshee to kill them, which really did give them a bit of uh, more HP there, as you can see, yeah, a yeah, lot definitely. in red. And now we do see a continuation from Boxer going into double engineering bay to kind of catch up with upgrades. But the armory is in construction now here for Marine King, who's going to be going to 2-2 very shortly. Banshee again on the natural. Just Boxer's aggression and speed in this game has been phenomenal. It has, but Marine King Prime's defense has been amazing as well. As well as his micro, he's pulling off mm. these wounded Marines just to make sure he doesn't lose too many of them. This Banshee's uh, damage is being not so much nullified, but it's certainly being slowed down an awful lot. And it's also, of course, focusing an awful lot of Boxer's attention. Thankfully, since there's no harassment coming in, it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Boxer is kind of slipping on the macro front, though. If you look at how much money he's got here, he doesn't actually yeah. have a way to sink it. He doesn't have enough production facilities yet yeah that's the problem with such an aggressive build because you're actually concentrated and your screen is on your opponent's base more often than your your actual own so supply yeah. blocks happen a lot and you know of course that he's very high in his resources could ideally throw down a third base now uh but it looks like the killing blow from box is just going to be the next push uh we do have a banshee in the main base once again here by slayer's boxer going for the suv and marine line but stim does go off 
Yeah, and it was actually kind of wasted. It, admittedly, that the stims are actually wearing those Marines down a bit, but there are enough medevacs to stop that. Marine King Prime's going to push out now, which means mm. that there's an opportunity here for Boxer to start to pick off. But as you said, these SCVs are now three shot, not two, which really slows down. I mean, it, you know, that's 50% of the damage being taken away, really, in terms of the amount of kills required. Another Banshee goes for the natural. It is intercepted and driven away, so it's not going to be able to do too much. But this one's just had a field day. It's had seven more kills already. It takes Marine King Prime down to 32 SCVs, but once again, we need to see a killer push here from Boxer, and he's now got his macro back in check and has a much lower resource count, and he actually hasn't queued anything either, so we, we did see him in previous games queuing an awful lot of units, but no, he's on top of his macro now, and this is where, after so much harassment, Marine King Prime could just fall to a simple straight-up push. Yeah, absolutely. And he can't allow that to happen. So the key thing here is that Zalnogger Tower at the south. But before we talk a little bit about that, we do see Marine King with a drop of his own for the first time, just putting the pressure back. But he's about to walk into siege tanks and Marines. Yeah, that's not going to work so well. I don't think so, honestly. I really don't. Maybe he picks off a supply depot here and there, but as soon as he starts dropping there, the tank starts to fire, and that's what happens when you don't have the necessary information. He's lucky that there's no stim available, otherwise that medevac would have been down as well, but this killer push continues to be built. 78 supply to 52. A lot of damage being done by Boxer to take Marine King mm. into this weakened state where he can finish him off. There's still a Banshee hanging back here as well, looking to poke in. Uh, the key, as I said before, was the Zelnoga Tower, which is in favor of Marine King. So if he can catch Boxer out of position with tanks, his 2-2 two -two upgrades will, f will push through harder than ever and will be able to kill everything of Boxer. But if he allows Boxer to control the Zelnoga Tower and push underneath his natural, then that's where things are going to get difficult. Boxer has finished up with that third command center, but as said, has been waiting and building patiently this army to really end the game once again, we do see Banshee harassing or knowing about the third base of Marine King, but also at the same time, another drop coming in from Marine King at the, so at the top left now into the main base of Boxer. And he will be able to find a bit of a better angle here. Yeah, God, I, I never realized just how much of a difference that plus one armor makes for SCVs. It really does. And it slowed this harassment down so effectively. Now you've got this area here, which is potentially vulnerable to damage. He could very easily pick off a reactor, maybe a tech lab with this drop. Or he could go straight for the natural and try and do damage there. But there's so many units there already. I don't think this is going to work out so well for him. He's going to go for it anyway. But he could explode onto SCVs, I guess. Oh, oh wait. Okay, well, no, that's... Or he could yeah. not. <laughs> or he could just die. That works too. And that's probably going to trigger Boxer to go. Because that was a medivac full of Marines. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a huge loss. Look at the supply count. The difference is massive. This is the kind of time where Boxer should really just go kill him. And he's even going to place a sensor tower down here. Is he going to take a third? Looks like he might. He's playing quite patiently here. And these Banshees, 15, 16 kills on the left one. We have 11 on the other. Just consistent harassment all game long with low health. They really have been game winners here for Boxer. And this one on the natural looks like it may near its death as it only has three energy left. <laughs> oh, no Lucky way. Lucky Banshee. It gets out. It is out of there. Nicely done. And then the other Banshee over here. It's like there's barely a wing left on that thing. It's just the pilot kind of pedaling away. It's still there. And it's still a threat. And it's actually finally forced a missile turret out of Marine King. And you know he didn't want to build that. Yeah, of course, being so far behind. But Slayer's Box is still patiently waiting here. He's reaching 200 supply. As 2-2 two -two finishes, I really expect him to go because he's just going to be sitting there banking money from here on out. So we'll see. But Marine King still has control of that Zelnoga Tower. Still will have position on Boxer if Boxer tries to move towards it. And now everything is unseized for Boxer. Still sitting in between the natural and third. But Marine King's now getting the one uh, or being the aggressive one as he walks through the center here. But will he catch Boxer unseized and out of position? Well, he, it's difficult to do because he's got a sensor tower. I mean, he's going to walk right into that, and it's going to be fairly obvious. But what he's trying to do is to force his opponent to go one way and then go for the other. That's the best way to do things here and to try and pick away at this because on Taldorim, attacking one of these directly is very, very difficult, especially against Terran who have no doubt sieged up tanks and maybe even a planetary fortress there. So it's tricky. And now Box is just going to roll out. He's got 78 Marines and 13 tanks. This should be a foregone conclusion. He's going for the concave. And if the deployment comes in behind this, a Marine King actually sits in it. 
Oh, yes. Damage will be done. There will be blood, I can guarantee. Now, here comes the undeployment. And now rolling forward once again. Zelnaga Tower in control of the one and only Marine King Prime. But in a straight-up fight with tanks there, it ain't going to work out so well for Marine King. And he gets crushed at the Zelnaga. Yeah, even without the tanks doing any damage, there's so many Marauders there that take away the actual value of that army there. And Absolutely. He immediately walks through that. And Slayer's Boxer, from start to finish here, amazing, amazing play. Really looking to claim that spot through to the next round. And this is the Taldarim Nightmare, sieging up underneath the natural. This is the weak point of this map for pretty much anybody. And now we just can have fun times with this base. That is going down. And how do you get through that as Marine King? The army supply is 68 to 134. Your upgrade advantage has basically evaporated. Uh, you do have 1-1 one, one on your opponent, but as you said, there's Marauders in the mix, whereas it's pure Marine, which is much better DPS here. And even then, you've got a Raven, so you can shut the Marauders down completely with a PDD. And I think this might just be a matter of time here. Can Marine King come back from it? It seems very unlikely. Yeah, really not. I mean, he's got 3-3 upgrades against Boxer, but it doesn't matter. The sheer amount of units here for Boxer is just so much more than the actual army size of Marine King. Even the tanks have plus one, and Marine Kings do not. Well, actually, about to be plus two, so even stronger than that. And he's sieging up, setting outside while sending Marines to pick off his expansion. Beautiful play once again. Yeah, nicely done there by Boxer, shutting that down completely, and that is a, that's a contain. That is a contain, straight up. And this army might end up getting caught out of position. There's the Stim to get a good concave, and he gets a good concave on his opponent, who stims forward into the line of tank fire. Oh, wow, completely crushed right there by Boxer, who moves in to take out this base as well, which will certainly not live to see another day. Boxer having his wicked way with fake Boxer and proving once again who deserves the name. Ah, and Marine King Prime sitting right here on this third base with a small number of tanks, just kind of waiting for his doom. Yeah, big, big risk here for Marine King Prime to open up Command Center first, and Boxer took full advantage of that, and now is yep. looking near the end of game number one here as he le leisurely strolls and scans, and we'll probably just A move up here. Yeah, I don't see why not, honestly. But admittedly, he still needs to be a bit careful. He's taking a lot of shelling, but there are just so many tanks. I think he can just obliterate this siege line as he does. The quick drop onto the tanks as well. And that's the cleanup. There is really no army left at this stage. And now the tanks can just roll on in to the natural. Take it out, no problem at all. MKP hasn't GG'd yet. He drops down, and there it is. GG, the first game in the series, goes to Slayer's Boxer, who is now one map away from advancing to uh, the actual playoffs of Iron Squid. Oh, what a great start to this series. Yeah, really, really good start. And this means a lot for Slayer's Boxer, no doubt. And he wants to advance through and he has to pick up this next game if he wants to. I mean, he could go and lose the next and then pick up the final one, but it would be a lot easier and a lot less stress for everybody involved if he just won the next game. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't think it would be a boxer series if there wasn't stress involved, though. So we'll <laughs> see. Marine King Prime. I, I, you, one could say that was a bit of a build order loss, really. It, it was well executed there by boxer, but CC first against Reaper speed? No. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't work. It's as simple as that. You're going to lose a lot of SCVs, and that put him behind the entire game. I have to wonder what would have happened if it had been a more straight-up fight where they'd both opened in a, a relatively similar or at least just not polar opposite kind of way we'll see what happens in the next series folks and uh, i am looking forward to seeing it certainly the uh, second game will come very shortly right after this break Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Iron Squid and the final series of Group A, where I bring you Marine King Prime <coughs> in the Red Trunks playing Terran to the west of Dual Sight versus his opponent. Currently up one game in his best of three series. He must win this series to advance, otherwise he is out, and Puma will go through instead. In the Blue Trunks playing Terran to the east, it is Slayer's Boxer. This is going to be a good game. That's all I'm going to say. I can't wait to see what strategies are going to be deployed here, especially by Slay's Boxer. Is very much so 
as a part of Team Slayers, that's how they play. They prepare yeah. for individual matches. Um, and, and the best example is MMA, preparing for every single game, personalized strategy coach. And I'm sure Boxer has the same treatment, especially for such an important game here, a game winning tournament advancing series here. We'll see what Slayers Box is going to bring up. It is dual site, remember? So it is a relatively small two player map where aggression can be rewarded, as we see already. Marine King Prime opening up for that refinery first in the bottom. Mm. Oh, this is classic. This series is classic in and of itself. It reminds me of the great TBTs that we've had at previous MLGs involving MVP, MMA, and of course, Boxer. It's awesome to watch. It really is. And I'm interested to see how this one's going to unfold. Barracks before refinery here for Slayer's Boxer. And it's weird for people that are fans of EG and Puma as well, and especially if they're fans of Slayer's Boxer, because for one reason they're saying, yes, Boxer, favorite, the Emperor. And on the other hand, oh, Evil Geniuses, Puma, ah, who do I want to win? Because, as mentioned earlier, it's Marine King Prime wins, Puma will advance through due to map score, yeah. and if Slayer's Boxer wins, that knocks Puma out. Yes, it does. That's simply the way that it is. And one has to wonder what, go what is going through MKP's mind at the moment. Does he even consider? You know, does he know? Is he yeah. aware? Did he play that? You know, did everyone knows, you know, the tournament is from replays. Everyone is aware of that. They are very, very recent, fresh replays, I might add. They're certainly not months old. And he ha have to wonder, is there any tactical decision making being made in the mind of Marine King Prime? Because he basically determines who goes through here. Does, yeah. does he want Puma to go through or does he want Boxer to go through? Who does he think he's going to have the easier time against? Or does he not even care and just is happy that exactly. he's through his uh, first or second place yeah. here, which is uh, exactly. realistically here. But again, we're seeing the same opening from Slayer's Boxer. Will it be for the Nitro Packs immediately here? And on the other hand, we do have, from what it looks like, a Banshee opening ah for um, Marine King here. And it's going to be a bit of a better opening, especially if he builds a few Hellions here. And the Banshee will deal considerable amounts of damage because there'll be nothing to really defend against it, of course, because this Reaper speed. And we do see Boxer switching it up. Speed. Yep. He is not going Reaper speed, I don't think. Well, I mean, he could, but it's it is possible Blue that he... Hellions, though. Willie yes. threw a factory down. Mm, we shall see. He only went for one Reaper this time around. I wonder if Marine King thinks, oh, it's the same build. It really mm. isn't. It's giving Now, I like the fact that he's decided not to go straight in here because this is going to give him more information if he gets the scout with this Reaper a bit later. And he may see the Banshee coming in. And he has to see the Banshee, but there's a Hellion and a Marine in the way. He must try and get through that. And, oh, it's going to be very hard for him to do that. He now dodges down. He's going to be intercepted here by Marine King Prime. He needs to get back up there. He's back up. Can he get... The scout on the Banshee. Well, he's going to get the scout of the second guess, so at least he knows it's not Cloak Banshee. And... Oh, ah, ugh. down it goes. Well, he knows that there's something. He doesn't know if it's Banshee. He doesn't know if it's, uh, you know, Medivac and Marine Hellion. Um, so it's a bit confusing so far for Slayer's Boxer, but he knows it's not super intensive that he needs to worry about Cloak Banshee as the second gas yep. was not taken. So we may actually see mm -hmm. Boxer just sit on the defensive side now with the units on the higher ground. And he is building a Viking, and interestingly enough, also building Cloak, which is curious to say the least. So we'll see what he, where he goes from that. Obviously, it's going to be into Cloak Banshee, assuming he's not just faking it, which you generally don't do with that. You do it with Cadassius Reactor, so it's not even an issue. The push is coming in here from Marine King Prime, Hellion Marina Banshee, but there's a Viking already there to uh, throw that Banshee back, and of course, no Cloak. That's half of the health gone, and now there's going to be a Cloaked Banshee coming out from Boxer. Yeah, the two options that Marine King could have come with was A, Banshee and these units, or B, Medivac and these units. Both are nailed down by the Viking, so very smart decision yeah. to get the Viking and then tr transfer over into the Cloak Banshee and stay on that. The only thing from Boxer is that he has not got a command center down at all, and we do see Marine King finishing up with his, so in a very shortly here... Boxer has to move out with everything. He has to go and do considerable amounts of damage. Otherwise, Marine King will walk away with this game as he increases his own production. Yes, indeed. And this Banshee is... Is it going to be seen? No. Ah, it is now because it's now dipping into the range of the Zelnaga Tower here controlled by Marine King Prime. So a bit unfortunate. He could have avoided that potentially, but he didn't do it. And that's, now that's giving... 
an opportunity here for Marine King Prime to get something sorted out. And with the second command center down, that is not an orbital as of yet, but it will be soon, which means it'll have scan energy. There's currently no scan energy, but there will be in the next couple of seconds. So Box is going to be very, very careful about what he does here. Nice use of the medevac to actually repair that SCV as it was taking damage and shut down there by Marine King Prime. Yeah, big investment for Cult Banshees, not just getting a couple of SCVs there, no not the biggest payoff there indeed. So Marine King Prime looking really, really good now and just has to stay solid on these two bases. Don't take any losses from aggression, which another Banshee's coming in to do. And he's going to cruise through this game and he has tanks available as well. Doesn't have Siege Mode, but it's not a fast upgrade and he can easily research it. I'm surprised we don't see a Tetlab on a barrack shit and he hasn't started Stim, but he is constricted to a certain amount of gas because of these tanks in in comes the next banshee yeah and i don't know how much damage it's really going to do because marine king is using the medevac to fix the scv so really this banshee's done nothing and mm. it's about to run out of cloaking energy once again and a scan of course will shut it down completely so i think boxer just has to leave with it yeah and, and what does boxer do behind this he's only just now expended picks up before able to command because he knows you know, that he's losing money in his main base mining. because it's oversaturated and he has to mine the natural and things are looking very good in this second game for marine king and he could very easily add on additional gas now and the natural can add on, you know, tech labs onto the barracks and get the combat shields and stim going. But even this push in itself, it's going to be very strong and difficult to deal with for Boxer who has minimal amounts of units. Yeah, that's very true. Boxer with a couple of Hellions just to try and do a bit of damage here, but they're shut down completely. He does know what's coming in his direction. Is he prepared for it? Well, things are not looking so great for him. He does have a reasonable Marine count, a couple of tanks out as well, but... He is outnumbered in pretty much every respect. And the Siege is actually going to save uh, him here. Yeah, very much so, actually. I'm rather surprised that Marine King actually took as much damage as he did. He can still clean his way through, though. There's just there's too many units. A lot of damage was done. Now this Cloak Banshee is going to town as well. But now he's going to move directly onto the natural. And there's the scan as well. Can he pick up the Banshee? No, he cannot. But it's about to uncloak soon anyway. So horrible things happening to uh, Boxer's natural oh, expansion at the moment. But there is a Banshee in the main base of Marine King with a 13, 14 kills here, which is doing equal and if not more amounts of damage than actually been dealt to himself. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? He's had to lift off there, and the count of Marine King Prime in terms of his workers is actually now much, much lower. The b oh, that was a nasty engagement, losing the Banshee so easily there. He does have tank support from the side, but this Banshee's now going to move in, pick off the tank as well. The Viking doesn't stick around to help, and that's cleaned up once again by Marine King Prime, and that puts back Boxer back onto one base. Indeed, he's going to have to lift up and go down once again, but that Banshee got 23 kills throughout this game. Or not just that Banshee, but uh, the other one as well, and that's a lot of damage been dealt, but, you know, Marine King's working on two bases compared to one. He has extra gas available to him also. He has the better um, saturation across the two bases yep. also. And once again, we are going to see another push out, still without Siege Mode, so he's just going to be using the basic DPS, but he does have a Banshee in there with eight kills, and that's going to be very crucial in picking off that tank on the higher ground. This is very true, and he's just going to roll out at the moment and uh, go back to base, and I don't really see why not for the moment. He does have a lead in terms of his economy, even with that damage. He's caught up once again and was mining more before that anyway. And he can go for yet another siege here with four tanks this time around. No siege tech available again. This Viking now moving and actually focusing down the medevacs instead, but air superiority is firmly in the hands of Marine King Prime now. And even with a single tank deployed, I would think that he should be able to break through this. Good focus fire here by Boxer. Oh, and lovely pickup by Marine King Prime. Lovely micro, a single hit point left. It kind of depressing that it went down there, honestly, but it was a good pickup nonetheless. And now that command center is gone once again. And Boxer, staying into the game, just like Boxer always does, never says never. And uh, you know, he's, there is another Banshee on the natural, um, does get picked off, doesn't get as many kills as the previous one, but Boxer's never say never attitude once again coming out here. And we saw him in, you know, in that game three versus Todd in day one that should have been a loss, yet he stayed in and took the full distance. So we're seeing that re uh, resilient attitude once again. Yes, indeed we are. And Siege Tank's now deploying just to try and defend this natural, but 
He is very far behind at this point. The Banshee now moving in from the top just to do some more damage if possible. Marine King is just, he just flat out refuses to build missile turrets. He hates them. And he will only build them if absolutely necessary. But there are three Vikings around. They're not anywhere near though. So the Cloak Banshee comes in just to start doing damage. Finally, a missile turret is kind of forced out here. Stim Marines move in just to drive that Banshee away once again. It's only got three kills, four now, as he has targeted down the Marine. And a nice save once again with the Medivac to to keep that SCV alive. There's the pickup from MKP, and Boxer is really far behind, incredibly far mm. behind. And to be honest, Marine King doesn't even need to attack. You know, he can just sit back no. and expand again and take his advantage even further than it actually is. But Marine King's style is never really to sit back and passively win the game. He'll look for any opportunity to do so, which looks like this very moment here as he strolls forward. And there are tanks and a lot of Marines defending the natural, but a quick pickup into the main and a bit of a check move um, could be set up here and I don't really see a way for Boxer to uh, do anything here. He is sending another Banshee to the natural of Marine King once again, undefended once again. Yep, and it's going to find this third base, and it's going to force a cancel on it, which will be nice, but this big doom drop into the main base is what I'm really concerned about. It's going to drop down. He could even drop down on top of the tank, but he doesn't really need to. He can focus fire before it gets another shot off. The uh, Banshee finds that, and of course, going right for the natural, but this is in Boxer's base, and Boxer doesn't really have an adequate way to deal with it unless Marine King ends up running into a ton of tank fire. He gets the cleanup on the Marines. He stims down. Can he defeat the tanks in the process? Boxer's tanks still live, but there's the GG regardless. He knows he's taken too much damage damage here and it is currently now 1-1 in this series it's incredibly tense one map in it folks it determines whether or not boxer will advance or whether puma will be the one to go through yeah this is all down to this final map now this is going to be crazy i can't even believe this will slay's box to be able to do it or not we'll find out i suppose Yes, we will. I don't even want to give you guys a break, but you're going to have to have one anyway because I don't think your hearts can handle it. So a quick break. When we come back, Game 3, the final match between Boxer and Marine King Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this final match. As tense as it is to determine whether or not Puma or, of course, the other contestant in this matchup goes through, this is the guy standing in their way, one way or the other, it is the one and only Marine King Prime in the Red Trunks playing Terran to the east versus his opponent, who must overcome Marine King in this match in order to advance. And if he does not, then Puma will take his place. It is Slayer's Boxer in the Blue Trunks playing Terran to the west. And I do hope that we've got that down correctly, the map scores. I'm sure everybody in the forums right now is like, no, it is right, no, it's wrong. But I think we've nailed that down correctly. Uh, otherwise, we'll so. be acting very, very stupid. So. Um, <laughs> very, very stupid, but we'll see. But very, very important game here for um, Slayer's Boxer, of course. Not as important for Marine King Prime. The thing with Marine King Prime, the way the seeding works, uh, from what I read, is that in the, obviously the next stage, he will have an easier run, but when you say easier, really is it that easier, considering that top two, whoever they are, are going to be amazing players? So, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it may not even come through Marine King might. Prime's mind at the moment as to who goes through with them because he's not going to then end up fighting that person immediately. They could yeah. both get knocked out or at least knocked down. So I, d I don't know if that's really relevant to him, honestly. And I don't know what his mindset is. There are some players who are very cold and calculating about who they play against, very much so. And then there are others that just don't care. You know, they're just going to play the best game they can. And if mm. they win, they win. And if they don't, then okay, I, I still get through, I guess. So I don't expect any punches to be pulled here one way or the other by Marine King. So, so far, both these guys going for similar builds. Marine King just with a little bit early of the refinery compared to Boxer. And uh, Boxer is delaying going into the refinery. And also just, uh, that's a bit interesting actually. Just looking, he was only in there with two and still is in there with two. Obviously it's means there. that he's going to have a bit of a better income in terms of minerals. But looks uh -huh. more like that he's going to be just expanding off uh, very, very shortly. Maybe adding on a reactor from this. And then double heli, uh, double marine, sorry, into an expansion, but still only with two. Definitely not looking to tech up, but on the other hand, Marine King definitely is still in with three and is rushing towards that 100 uh, gas, ready to build a factory. 
Yep, there's the factory there. And I think if we see a factory come down after this, then we'll know that a mistake has been made here by Boxer. But it doesn't seem characteristic for that to be the case, as you said. And it's most likely going to be an expansion right about now. Yeah, it's pretty much an expansion build here from Boxer. Can get the factory straight afterwards, but basically switches the build for command center before the factory. Uh, and mm -hmm. with 100 gas now there is going to come the factory. So I actually do like this build from Boxer. It's a little bit better than his opponents, in my opinion, uh, because if you keep, if you consider the travel distance between bases, Boxer's made up for that distance that Marine King will be faster on, but also has a faster command center. So I do like this uh, build so far from Boxer. I guess what happens when you live in a house with 10 other really great Terrans, <laughs> you just, you know this stuff. TVT is guaranteed to be a match that you're well practiced in. And I just mm. want to point out as well that this is not just some two-bit tournament for Boxer. This is a tournament he wanted to be in. Boxer only enters the tournaments that he desires to play in. And that means he takes them all seriously. And in the meantime, we've got a star put here that's placed in, it's a very aggressive posture. It's as far forward as it could be towards the base of his opponent. Yeah, it's going to be straight for a medivac and send that across here, but Slayer's box is going to have, you know, e roughly equal amounts of units. He's going to have roughly the similar composition, depending on if that factory goes onto the tech lab. I wonder if it will or whether it will be the starport. Uh, and looking through Box's vision, he sees nothing. So the safer option would be to put the starport on for a raven, but actually we are seeing the factory come down and a helium being constructed. Are we going to see blue flame being researched in just 40 gas time? Well, that would certainly help. I mean, if it's going to be Marine Hellion coming out, then that'll be helpful. But the thing is, it's going to hit way before then anyway, so I have to wonder. And that's um, in interesting information here gathered by Boxer. He now knows that there are Hellions, mm. but he doesn't know about the Marine count behind it. So he doesn't know, is it a scouting push? Is it an actual aggressive push? There is a bunker up already with four Marines in it. Zelnaga Tower now controlled by Marine King Prime, who rolls across the map once again to try and apply just a bit of pressure here. Which is... I mean, it's not going to work out so well, I don't think. He shouldn't take too much damage from this. Well, he's going to drop in the main, and there's really not much there defending it. The tank will help, well, there's a but... Viking. If the, yeah, the, I was going to say, the Viking pushes this away. This would be very good for Slayer's Boxer here, but the Viking won't do enough damage before they deploy. Yeah, that's true. It will not, and the drop comes in, but there's some good fire coming in once again from Boxer. Will he be able to stop this? Oh, he couldn't kill the Medivac. That would have been very nice, but now he's backing this up with a tank as well. Medivac is now down, takes a Marine with it in the process. Hellions against tank. Well, tank actually does win that quite significantly, and now Marines moving forward, but being blasted apart by tank shells, and the amount of harassment damage done is one, maybe? One SCV killed. Yeah, one SCV killed. There's a command center on the low ground here. This is almost looking like a win already. Like, what really can uh, Marine King Prime do here? And what his option is now, the only option he has left, is to win with a slow sea tank push and Vikings. But Boxer has exactly the same. He has the same tech as you, but he has double the economy and he throws down four more barracks. And this looks like Boxer could actually be the winner here. He really could. That would be amazing for Boxer to go through in this kind of manner. It was a very, very well defended piece of... Well, you saw the aggression come in and it was just beautiful play from Boxer, mm. it really was. So will it be enough to carry him through the series? It's certainly given him a bit of a hand. Admittedly, air superiority is now in the hands of his opponent, so he does still have to watch out. Yeah, and if... Uh oh if Boxer moves out and loses everything... Box, remember, Box hasn't seen anything. He scanned the main base and saw what tech he had, but he doesn't know about the expansion here. <sighs> both, neither of these guys see each other. That's the wow. crazy thing about it. They both just wandered past each other here. This bunker is empty. The Vikings are now going to move into the base like, where's the army? Uh-oh. And the question is, what do they try and do? Are they going to base race each other? They very well might. Yeah, Boxer sees and continues walking forward now. Both of these guys do have siege tech uh, and siege mode, sorry. So they will be able to siege up inside the main base and kind of hold each other from going in. But it looks like Boxer's Nactual is about to be ripped open by these units at the same time. So is Boxer doing the same. 
Wow, what on earth is going to end up happening here? And there we go. Boxer is the first to be afflicted there by a supply block. And he's just trying to micro against these SCVs, which are trying to drill their way through the tank armor. In the meantime, Marine King is destroying the natural expansion. SCVs coming off the line straight into siege tank shelling, which is nasty one way or the other. And now Boxer trying to focus down that Viking, which is not getting repaired. And the SCV is being devastated there as well. Almost identical on both sides at the moment. A surround on the Viking with those SCVs. SCVs, the Viking at the top, chewing its way through yet more units. This is just weird. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening here. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, Boxer has more units on the, on his uh, in his opponent's base, but they're just gonna kill each other's buildings, I guess. There, there is a tank here that is going to help out a lot for Marine King, which will slow it down, but he can't stop the push coming, as the sight range from these Vikings will just help out so much. If he could kill those Vikings, he could actually float and then try and force a draw. And, you know, maybe that would be something to do. But I don't know. This, this is just weird. <laughs> it's a very unusual situation here. And I suppose it has to be if it involves Boxer. This kind of stuff ends up coming in more than you might expect. Another barracks taken down. Boxer is gathering his forces over to the top of his main at the moment. His SCV count is only at 2 versus 11. Mining yeah. is occurring. Tanks are now out. But shelling is continuing to happen on this main mineral line. It's three Vikings from Boxer versus two from his opponent. But are there only two in the base? I think so. Boxer has to be so careful. He actually just used a scan in his opponent's base to check the, vi to the tank count. But he can't repair his command center unless he deploys a mule. And it's going to burn out. He has to repair his command center. Yeah, he does. And there's... The, well, he, he, he does He's have got no money to, to build to SCVs anyway, I guess. Mule. Here comes the mule. He's okay. He, he can fix that. Yeah, actually, he they've got a mine. He's got a mine because repairing does cost money. It's not free. So he does yeah. have to mine here. You know, this is ridiculous. He's got and a even then, the, the Vikings stuff. are going... Oh, my God, oh, they're taking more there? damage. Can he get there? Can he get... He needs to repair it right now. The CC is down. Hmm. Oh, man. Okay. But now well. he kills the tank. And that... And I, I actually don't know what to say at this point. I am utterly confused. I don't know what's happening. Uh, all right. So let's let's look at this. Two Vikings. All right. Let's have a look at the unit tab. The three tanks here with Viking aid. Oh no, he can't. But he can't afford to lose the tank. Oh, he, he loses one. the he lost tank. One. SCVs come in as well. He's got a gun. He guns them down with that Viking. Loses one Viking in the process. That is definitely not a good situation to be in. He has minerals. He can actually what? repair. And the Marines, gonna, the Marines are going to help as they come from the, the middle of the base here. So he's trying to get a surround with SCVs on the tanks. And he's not able to get it yet anyway. He keeps the repairs in. He's, oh, he might lose that tank. He's got to microwave out and he hasn't able to do that. But the Marines are coming in to clean this up. I... I is this... I just... I actually have no idea. Actually, he's, he's going to lift. He's going to force a draw. Surely he's going to force a draw. The... There is a Viking. There's one Viking left from... He, he can kill it, but there's two Vikings left for Marine King. No I, SCVs. Yeah, no SCVs. So, if, oh, if okay, he loses, I know. Ah, uh, yeah. He's okay. not going to let this you, guy mine. He's going to be like, all right, good luck. Have fun trying to rebuild your base. Wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. And the Viking... Oh, he's trying to repair the two Vikings in the top left here. So there's two Vikings getting repaired with just the 90 minerals he has left. Yeah. This is interesting. But Boxer won't let Marine King mine anyway because he'll just follow the command center. So he can never rebuild to kill anything in the air. Hmm. Yeah, but the thing is that there's two Vikings versus one. So if it comes to... Once that Viking is dead, then Marine King could just float for eternity, I suppose. He can force a draw. Yeah. Which would yeah. be really weird and force right. us into a fourth map. Yeah, this is, this looks like it, it has to be a draw, which is silly, really. This is weird. The Vikings now getting fully repaired. There's enough money to fully repair them. But the problem is, does... You know, Slay's Boxer has to lift. He has to lift the Viking at some point. There's positions on this map, of course, where structures cannot be hit by, by ground units. Therefore, the Marines can't hit it. He has to lift the Viking. As soon as he lifts the Viking... He can get picked off. Hmm. Yeah, and if, if Marine King Prime actually moves out to a position where the Marines can't contribute, which, you know, somewhere like here, for instance, or indeed here, 
Mm-hmm. I don't. I can't read that, but I have a feeling that they are they are maybe calling a draw, because yeah. if he's flo- he's floated off to the bottom, there's nothing that can be done here. Mm. I can't read Korean, so I mean I can, no. but I wouldn't know what the words say. Um, yeah. That's... All right. Well, this is weird. Two Vikings now picking off these units. But, but what can happen is the Vikings can just go around, kill every floating building, but Boxer can just stand by a building and say, all right, kill this one and land. He's actually slowly drifting towards the Marines. He's put it right in range. He's actually just shoving it slightly forward, but the Marines can't hit it from there. And the Viking can't take off because it'll die. There's nothing to repair it. There's one SCV, but there's no minerals. And there's no CC to mine. It, it's a draw. It can't be anything else. Yeah. And in case of a draw, the, the match will have to be replayed on here, so... What? That's oh, crazy. Um, all right, this well... This was unexpected. <laughs> well, well, you know I guess the we symbol on the end there? That, that they're looking like the double Ts. That is actually a sad face. Okay. That actually is, and, and that's the weird face, the one like, I'm not impressed face. The one at the end by Boxer. Yeah, but the funny thing is, like for Marine King, this isn't this isn't even a big deal. He advances regardless, but maybe he doesn't know that. But well, this Boxer, is Boxer, yeah. yeah if he he has yeah. to win this. Yeah, he has to win this map, and Marine King is preventing him from doing so by floating buildings. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Marine King's like, you know that orbital you got to kill to win the game? Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, I I cannot wait to see, to hear. The, I want to hear the Korean netizen reactions to this. I really do, because this is nuts. I, I know what the Team Liquid reactions are going to be, but I want to see what the Koreans would have to say about this. The Viking is now flanking around the side, and he's taunting. He is taunting his opponent here. I, what other explanation is there? And <laughs> oh dear God! Oh, this is a draw. This is a draw. He can't now, kill it. He you, can't kill it. No, he can't. I I don't even know what's being said here. No doubt, someone will translate this eventually. But yeah. I, I can, you know, it's... I think they're asking for a draw now. He's like, should we draw? It has to be. <laughs> That's it. Draw game. Draw game. All right. We have to replay it, folks. We have to replay it. Yeah. Uh, my, my brain. How the hell did it get to that stage? All right. So let's just but... erase that game from our memory and go back yep. to game number three in Antigua Shipyard. 1-1 one, one between Marine King and Slayer's Boxer. Well, I knew it was going to be dramatic. I just wasn't really sure what form the drama would take. Now we've seen it. And here we go again. Ladies and gentlemen, a short break. And when we return, Game 3, Part 2 of Marine King Prime vs. Boxer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game 4 of this best of three series between Marine King Prime in the Red Trunks playing Terran to the east on the Antigua Shipyard versus his opponent, Slayer's Boxer in the Blue Trunks playing Terran to the west. Yeah, Slayer's Boxer must be feeling pretty upset, to be honest, because imagine if he had have seen that happening. Because it, it, the base race happened because he was like, oh, that's the only option I have left. He went around. He, well, Marine King went straight and I went around. If that yeah. hadn't happened, any other scenario, Boxer would have won. He had a better economy, yeah. had the same amount of units. It was just that base race that really threw him off. And that was a game that could have pushed him through. And I'm sure that he would have been upset about that. That's probably why we saw those droopy faces uh, towards the end there. Yeah, even someone that much of a veteran at the game has got to be pissed about that. And <laughs> you can hardly blame him. Good. Uh, his fans will be. I think everyone's fans, even Marine King Prime fans and yeah. Boxer fans will both be kind of annoyed about that game because it was absolutely ridiculous just the way that it ended up happening. Yeah, it's a little bit unlucky, to be honest. Like Any other scenario, I really do feel that Slayer's Box was down to win that oh, no matter it. what happened. So, it. you know, double the economy, equal tech, equal units. And uh, like every second that passes by, the advantage goes even deeper into Slayer's Box's hands because he just has double the income and obviously double the production as those three barracks were finishing up. So really, really unfortunate there. But we'll see what happens. We do have an equal build once again by both of these players. Wouldn't it be funny if it happened to be a draw again? That would be nuts because they are you know, using the same build so far. 
Uh, th funny is one way of putting it, certainly. I think after, if that would happen again, I'd probably just go hang myself right now. I just, I, <laughs> I'd, I'd lose all, I'd lose my passion, man. I just, I'd lose my passion for StarCraft after seeing that. It is a bit of a deviation this time because we notice the Boxer has not gone for his two in refinery build. So it's a bit different. Yeah, I wonder, that, that's the mind games. This is all about mind games this last game. You know, do they do the same? Do they not? Do they change it up? So either way, it's going to be interesting to see. So Boxer with three and gas and a second refinery thrown down here. Will he be throwing a tech lab onto his barracks or will he straight go into factory and banshee from here? We'll have to see. Whereas on the other hand from uh, Marine King, looks like he'll use the first initial 100 gas for a factory immediately. What is Boxer doing here? Does he throw down that second tech lab? Or oh, first tech lab even, after it? the second marine even. Mm. Yeah, because he's got a lot of gas now. No, he's going to go into a factory, mm. but that factory is a bit later than his opponent, certainly. Is there any reason why he would hold on? Well, the thing is with double gas before factory is that you have enough for cloak and banshee straight away. Whereas if you, if you go for the second gas after, you can get one... And then the other, there's a little bit of a gap in right. between. So he's rushing straight for tech here. I mean, it still could be like blue flame, I suppose, and like a medivac or something. But most likely case scenario here is that it'll be for cloak banshees. And it looks like we do have a very similar build from Marine King this time. Again, with the double gas, again, with the reactor. And we'll probably be seeing the start put come down again. He's just going for exactly the same. Interesting. Very interesting and very tense. More to the point, there's the starpot, as you said, coming down and a similar build. I wonder, will Boxer hold it as well as he did the first time? Because he did really hold it well. But mm. as you mentioned, there is a potential deviation here. Up goes the factory for a tech lab in the corner here with that much gas. Most likely, unless it's some funky blue flame hellion drop, pretty much will be Banshees here. And it looks like, you know, with Marine King, he's doing exactly the same. It's not... Usually you can see this build with just a single Vespian guys have been taken, single refinery, and then you expand behind it. But he's not really looking to do that again here. He's looking to do significant amount of damage with the Medivac and then tech over into Tank and Viking probably straight away as he's got a lot of gas saved up here. And we do see the Cloak and Banshee straight away and also a Tech Lab down for Boxer for his tank. So neither of these guys actually expanding both one base play but here comes the aggression once again with a banshee you can actually send a banshee across and build a second banshee and and hold on because marines actually give you a lot of uh, survival time here and especially with a tank i think box is looking okay yeah things are looking all right for him i would say certainly but it is very very touch and go i if he if he gets a bad engagement and gets mm. caught out of position then he's in a lot of trouble and that could be very unfortunate for him. It, what would actually really suck is if a scan went down here, I, I probably won't. Or indeed if the medevac spotted up and actually shut that starport down with the tech lab and stopped the cloak from going up. Banshee is now on the field and he moves it into a good position to do damage here. Snipe off a marine and here comes the tank to back him up here. And that's what he tried to do. He tried to go for the tech lab, but he's not going to be able to. So that gets thrown back for the moment. And now this is where Box is looking really, really good. Oh, no, wait. The Tech Lab's going to be under pressure. Oh, no. He can't lose that. He can't lose it. Oh, uh, I, I, I foretold, man. I have foreseen. Oh, and it happened anyway. And that's no cloak, which is going to really throw a horrible spanner in the works because oh. there's the Viking. Oh, no. Hellion Drop That's is grim. still about to go down in the main base as well. Boxer not in best position, a bit flustered because of that. He could lose a lot of SCVs here, but he does pick Thankfully up. he didn't. Didn't get a volley off, but yeah, that cloak going down, the investment of the double gas early, the investment of that thrown away, and he must be feeling so annoyed after that first game, but does decide to, you know, collect his thoughts and does expand behind this, but Viking in hot pursuit of this Banshee on the natural here. Yeah, he wants to stay the hell away from that. The Viking needs to be shut down one way or the other. The question is, what do you shut it down with? You've got to catch it out of position with Marines. Will Marine King Prime let you do that? Absolutely not. And the push-out's coming in as well. And that Viking gives him great visibility. He knows the composition of the force and where it is. And that's vitally important. And with this air dominance that we do see from Marine King, we're going to see that same style again, you know, pushing with Tank, Viking, and even a Banshee in the mix, but we do have Slayer's Boxer's Banshee coming into the main base. How many SCVs will he get? Because this is crucial in slowing the income down for this push. 
field day. Population this Banshee uh, doing plenty of damage here. The push is coming in from Marine King Prime with this air dominance. There is no siege tech for either side at the moment. Viking shuts that down. A Viking is shot out of the air as well. Landing coming in as well. He's got a good number of tanks, but he is outnumbered in terms of these Marines. He is deliberately backing off to try and let those reinforcements come in, as well as the SCVs come around the side to get the surround here. He's got a lot of SCVs. He nails the tank down. The Marines tear their way through there, but of course, damage has also been done on the main base, and it's huge for both players. This Banshee's still alive. It's got 20 kills and climbing. Yeah, he's killing everything Marine King has, but at the same time, Boxer just about has siege tech if he can siege up in the main base but no a banshee comes in two marines is not enough with the well the viking actually will be able to push it back but in comes the marines the slays boxer Oh, one more shot goes off as well. Takes off a good number of Marines as well, but there are still units there. There's two more tanks, and he pushes that back again. Where is the Banshee? Is it dead? It yeah, obviously, the Viking, it must have yeah. died. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, this is so bad. This oh, is so no. bad for Slayer's Boxer. He's on the oh. verge of leaving this tournament. Even with one tank sieged up there, he can run and A move into it, which Vikings he does have do. Landed. The Vikings have landed. He shuts down one tank. He can't really shut down a second, surely. He, does, he doesn't have a lead here either, unfortunately. Needs to take this out, needs to repair it, but with what? The tank's down, Viking on Viking, and tanks and Marines now streaming across the map. He's, is he able to get another tank out? He is. He's got two Vikings here. And Viking on Viking, which he has a slight edge. He's got the tank there to finish that off. Two Marines coming up here. This is really grim for both sides. Two mules have now been deployed here for Boxer. If this was an orbital, this would be a huge difference between the two. But yeah. Marine King is continuing to build. Boxer holds on here, but this would be the worst way to go out of this tournament, especially after that last match. Yeah, nine SCVs, double mules versus three and double mules. And, oh, this is not looking good for Slays Boxer. Trying to go to orbital, trying to salvage this game. Remember, he does have the opportunity to get this as an orbital command and then push forward. But the problem is that Marine King already has a decent income where he can keep building units and units. we see a raven coming here raven is an interesting choice actually uh, that'll just be here for uh, for auto turrets everywhere to really add the extra damage with the marina tanks which are streaming down now and oh I, i'm feeling so sorry for slayers boxer right now 13 14 supply versus you know double more this is this is incredibly disappointing I'll just flat out say it right now. As a fan of both of these players, the way that that last game went down was disappointing as hell. And it's resulted in this, which is a mess. You know, a complete mess and a really horrible end to a series. And by the looks of it, the end to Slayer's Boxer in this tournament. Yeah, this is not good. And here comes the push. Here is the push. And with enough units, he can contain Boxer. He can push Boxer with the with the Raven uh, sight range. He can land auto turrets onto the... Oh, he's got to be careful not to lose that. Ooh, it's, Ooh. it's very close. It, ah, oh, one more shot would have done it there. But the siege is now happening underneath. And it's only kind of a matter of time here. The Raven's down, which is certainly yeah. helpful. But how do you stop those Marines? The tank shelling is coming in. The Marines make their way through. A large contingent of Marines have been blown out of existence. There's going to be another Marine popping out here, which may live just, but... I don't know, and if, if Boxer comes back from this, it would be the greatest thing in the world. It just, it seems so unlikely at this stage. There's no units coming out for Boxer, and his opponent has units. Air superiority is actually in favor of Boxer here. If he can take that Viking down, then maybe he can hold on for longer. Let's have a look at this. Remember, the double mules are now kicking in for Boxer, building and being able to build double SCVs, being able to build or use double mules at the same time now is really starting to come into effect. Uh, but does he have enough time to build up an army to hold off this inevitable push? Vikings are down and the SCVs are being pulled off the line and this is probably going to be it. The first tank's been taken out. Needs to try and take out the second. Take oh. a lot of shelling here and the second tank is taken but the Marines are still on the line. That last tank is all that's really left. A single Marine comes in. It, it's, it's, oh, the Viking kills it. Oh, wow. The Viking is what saves it. But another tank is out for Boxer. He's got three. I, I need to stop pretending. This is over, I think, for Boxer. I, as much as I don't want to say it, he's holding on so well. But what is he going to do? He's got three SCVs versus 19. Four mules have been dropped. But I don't know. He's, he just, he's holding on for pride here. If he comes back from this, it will be basically a miracle, I feel. Yeah. And I don't see it happening. Yeah, he, he knows too. Another tank in position and in range, I think, to touch that tank. Um, or maybe not. It's right on the edge. But no, no. 
this is really bad for Boxer, knowing that he had the previous game almost in reach and almost been his, able to go through. It was flat out his. And it was a collision of unhappy circumstances that caused it to go the way that it did. It was Boxer's game without question. And it was only because that, of that, what I'd just call a dirt moment of them both just running past each other, not realizing, then going for this funky base trade where Marine King floated and forced the draw. And if that had not happened, then, yeah, Boxer would have won that without question. I think, I think he and knows. Like, he's not even building anything, he man. He's not building SCVs. He's like he a single siege I mean, tank. Got, he, he's got quite a lot banked up, but he can't really build it. I mean, he's, build, he's now building two more SCVs, trying to get back in it. But there is now a Banshee coming into the base, which is probably going to be lights out, I feel, for Boxer, because he doesn't have the air superiority. Shoots down a Viking. Defiant to the last here, but Marine King is going to take this and go through with a straight 4-0 sweep and a really horrible end to this tournament. There's the GG, and I'm not even going to pretend not to be disappointed by that. Yeah, a little sad for Slayer's Boxer fans, but at the same time, amazing news for Team Evil Geniuses. If our, um, our work is correct and our map scores are correct in front of us here, it looks like EG's Puma will advance through in a little tie there between himself and Slayer's Boxer. Slayer's Boxer does have the lower in map score, and that is the deciding factor here. Uh, I'm depressed now, man. I am. I'm just going to say it straight up. That was a depressing end to the series, which should have been far, far cooler than it was. And it ended up being just a collision of these awful things to happen. So, oh, well, that's just how tournaments go sometimes. And you can't really play favorites, although I will anyway. I would have wanted to see Boxer go through. I think that he had that third game. He absolutely deserved to go through, but it didn't happen. And it's results that matter. It's nothing else. It, it, feelings, emotions don't come into this. No. We have to be robots. We have to be robots. And that is Group A finished, man. That is Group A done. And we got to look forward to the next group. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, it's a nice group. Why don't we have a little bit of a rundown of what's going to be coming in Group B? So the players within Group E, I'm sure everybody's waiting for this one. MC, Idra. We have Symbol, who uh, we did commentate for the qualifier of this tournament. Oh, yeah. And uh, we do have Ooh. Thorzane, and then also MVP. What is that group? <laughs> that is what a is that good, group, good group. And Symbol, probably the most... But probably the most predicted and written down as the underdog here, but he's actually very good. He's a very good StarCraft 1 player, came into StarCraft 2 now, has done very decent so far, and I think he's going to be able to do okay, but MC, Idra, Thorzain, MVP, symbol, wow. Yeah, that's good. That is incredibly good. That group's going to be amazing. No doubt we're going to see some astonishing ZVZ action. Idra versus symbol is going to be great. And, of course, I think everyone wants to see MVP versus Thorzane. Why would they not? Yeah, MV... I mean, personally, for, for hot spotlight games there, MVP, Thorzane, MC versus Idra. Oh, wow. It's just, it's just going to be a phenomenal group to watch and cast for sure. Yep, it is a hot group without question. And you guys should make sure to tune in because show five on Wednesday will be the start of Group B casting. And... Just remember to check out ironsquid.tv for all the information. That's got the schedule, it's got the stream links, it's got the Facebook, the Twitter. Just check it all out, make sure that it's there. And of course, if you missed any of this, you can catch the US rebroadcast a little bit later on tonight at around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, just keep an eye out on Team Liquid, the live report threads, the discussion threads, of which there will no doubt be a huge amount over that last series of games. I was going to stay out of it, man. I, I, I'm sad. I, I'm legitimately sad at this point. Sadder than I've ever been when casting a StarCraft game after seeing that. And I just, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. So I'm going to look forward to Group B, which is going to be amazing without question. Absolutely. This is going to be such a good group, Total Biscuit. I'm so excited to actually commentate those games. Oh, yeah. The highest possible level that you can expect from this tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the roundup for Group A. My name is Total Biscuit. And I'm the Apollo. And we'll see you next time.
Thank you.